Okay, I'm going to demonstrate or demo a uh, effective practice techniques to, to be able to handle practice to practice pressure. Um, so it's that repetition. I'm trying to do at least I'll try to do five in a row of my options, um, and then if I don't make it to five, I have to restart. So I'll start with my lanes, and I need to vary the timing. Very important to vary, vary the timing because you don't want to get into that habit of always passing at the same one, two, three, one, two, three. But so you got to vary the timing and be able to release it on that timing as well. So I'm going to start with three. So it's kind of allowed to give you an idea of how I count. I count, at least for this pass, for the lane, I count when it hits that man. That's one, two, three. So one, one, two, three. So without, I'll do it now to myself. So that was on three, now I'll do four. So I start to start over again. I'm back at one again. So I start with three. Back to four. Be my five in a row of my lanes. Normally I do ten, but for now I'm just doing five. And now I'd be doing I want to do five in a row of my walls. So I'm going to get three again. One, two, three. Hold on. One, two, three. I was going to go at six, but it doesn't really matter if you just happen to pick a different number. Seven's fine. I'll go uh, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Ooh, eight. So that's, uh, I lost it there. So now I'd start over. I'll go back probably to three. One, two, three, four. Lost it again. Start over. I'm having trouble actually remembering where I count from. I'm counting out loud which is distracting me, but well, I'll just do it without counting out loud. Six over again. It's better. Seven. Lost too high, so I'm going to reset. I missed, so now I have to start over again. So that's the way you keep going on. So, as you'll see, my lanes are much better than my walls. Um, funny enough. On the opposite of most people, I'm sure. So uh, by virtue of doing this repetition, it you really does unearth what options you need to work on more than others. Uh, so it's built, it's built in, which, which is great. And it has built in that pressure. So when you get to that, say for example, I'm on five and I'm on eight, I'm gonna do my lane. I know I'm under pressure now. I wanna get that. Now, if I drop this, this it matters to me because I wanna move on. So it forces me to practice those, those uh, focusing techniques. So I just focus on the ball. Focus on the grains of the ball. That's one of my techniques of finding focus. Is you see every ball has grains on it, 
and I kind of just focus on those grains in the ball. It allows me to focus about, just focus on something, <laughs> but not on, I don't want to drop it. I don't want to miss it. Oh no, this is eight. I don't want to be focusing on those things. I want to be focusing on something positive, something to do with what I'm doing. Uh, if you have a other little thought, maybe you have a thought about like quick release or firm or dictate or some little mental word that helps you focus. Um, some players, you see Rico, the way he gains focus or he grounds himself, he pushes down on the scores. If you see that, he really pushes on the scores. He'd be like really pushing. Um, Billy wipes the table like this. He does that. That's his little, you know, get ready to go, get focused. Mine, I kind of either squeeze on my ring. Um, this reminds me that my, my ring is my family and family is the most important thing that really what I'm doing here isn't that important. It doesn't really matter if I win or lose, so, but it grounds me. I push on my ring sometimes. I push well on the handle and I also focus on the grains of, uh, the, grains of the, uh, the ball. And sometimes even before a point, I'll pick it up and look at it. And I'll, if you see me doing that sometimes, you wonder what the hell's he doing? He's just looking at the ball. It's like some people look at it for the stripes, for whatever. I'm, I'm focusing. I'm using this as a focusing technique to focus my mind, to not let it wander upon negative thoughts. Um, and if I don't need to do that, I'm either thinking about what it is I'm going to do. Like for now, for example, if, if I was in a game and I'd say, okay, if this is what I was going to do, I was going to say, for example, I let red late that I could go lane. So I want to make sure I get eight tosses in and then wait for a lane to open up. So that would be my, my, that's my mental state right now. That's my plan. So I'm focusing on something good. That's positive. That's, that's affirmative. That's what I'm going to do. There's no doubt there. And so now I'm going to execute that. I might even start from here, from a drop, for example. So there, I really focused. The ball was wobbling a bit, but I focused on the grains, and I was able to execute it just fine. So now if I was done my five bar, I'd move on to my three, but I don't think you can see that with the camera. So those three things there, um, really good to practice that pressure. Varying the timing makes you have to keep the ball in position so that you can release it when you need to. Not when you want to. You don't want to get in the habit of like one, two, three. One, two, three. Like that's that's rookie semi pro stuff. Yes, you can execute, but you need to execute when the option is open. So you need to be able to wait for it, keep that ball in position so when it's open, you can release it. And so what I've done to do that with external stimuli, I mentioned that before about one of the practice techniques in, for mastery. I listened to the radio, and whenever the radio said a number, I would then release the option. Um, so the radio would, would be playing a, a talk show, not, not, not a song, of course, I'd be there forever. But I'd go back and forth, be releasing it, and I'd wait for a number to be said, and it's the date of July 25th, you know, and I'd release it. You know, so that, that's kind of being able to execute upon external stimuli. You have to get used to that. You can't just execute when you want. You have to get used to executing when the man moves, executing when he dies, executing when he's there and still. Like you have to get used to reading these things and be able to react to them when it happens, not when you want to, when they give it to you. It's vital and critical. Another thing that you could do is um, make a game of it so that if you go pass and then shoot, you can actually, you get a point, but if you miss a pass or miss a shot, then they get a point. Uh, it's another way that you can practice pressure and make a game-like situation. I used to do that from the two to the five to the three. I had to pass from two to five to three and score, all with different options, all with varying timings, and then I'd get a point. If I miss any one of those things, then they'd get a point. And so I'd see that, could I win the game or not? And it was often kind of close because it's like two to five, five to three, three to shot, all perfect. Uh, because that's what I was doing during games. I had a two to five series, so I wanted to get used to that repetition of two to five, get it, set up, you know, make my reads, execute, get the ball. I don't know if you can see this, but you'll hear the sound. So anyway, so that's uh, practicing with pressure, effective practice. Uh, try to make it the same as exactly as a game. Wear the same shoes you'd wear at the tournament. Get the same lighting. Play during the same time of day. Oh, my guy's all broken. Okay.